Let's spend the next few minutes just worshiping your Father. In the language of the Spirit, worship God. Let God know that you are grateful that you are alive today. Maria Garabo, Santoria Legarabo Baba, and Toria Legaria Garabo, Maria Garabo, Santaria Laga Sunday, Interia Gazuto Broco Zita, Interi Legarabo, Mazia Catoria Gazontoria Legarabo, Maria Garabo, Santoria Galibro, Intera Legarabo, Shaka Zata, Mentoria Legazio Toria Gazota, Maria Gazotoria Legarabo. Masioko Zatoria like a Sunday, and Soko Toria like a Ribo Santa, Lendoria like a Ria Garabo Santa, and Tori Garabo Sataria like a Garabo, Masito Ria Garabo Shataba, Lagaragaka Proko Zotoria like a Garabo, Masio Tori Gasodaba. Here I am to worship. Lord, I'm here to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together, lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to You don't need instruments this morning. Let God know why you are in church this morning. Lord, I'm here to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Worship you, Masia Kerja Mohamia Garabos Kande, Leia Reposante, Leia Bronga. Yes, Lord, all together, Lord, Masia together. That's why we came this morning yes. to worship you, to bow before you, to adore you, to declare that only you are God, to declare that only you are King. Our hearts praise you. It's not about anybody, oh God. It's about you, the living God, the mighty God, the one who owns all things, the beginning and the end of all things, the unchangeable God, the one who was from the beginning, before the beginning, before the beginning, the living word, the breath of life, our savior, our king, our helper, our deliverer. We exalt you this morning. That's why we are here. We are here to bow down. We are here to worship. We are here to magnify your name. We are here to declare you unshakable, unmovable, irreplaceable. Nobody can question you. The original Kabiesi, the owner of the ends of the earth, my master, my lover, my king, 
my husband, my deliverer, my pillar, my sustainer, my helper, my healer, the glory and the lifter of my head, King of Kings. Ribo Sunday. We lift you high. We worship you. We magnify your name. Holy Father, today, the first Sunday of February, we could not have kept ourselves alive. You kept us, oh God, through January. Many things happened in January. We were pushed to the wall. We were pressed to the wall. But Lord, you showed up for us. You made a way where there was no way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Thank you. That's why we're worshiping you this morning. Thank you for a new month. Thank you for your blessedness. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your strength. Blessed be your name. Jesus, much less name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wave to your neighbor and say good morning. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Choir, thank you. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. And this morning, I just want to share a few things for us. What day is today of the fast? Eh? Sanctuary, you don't know. You are not fasting. Day 28, the Lord will keep us. I know some people are about to finish. Some are doing 12 days and then they stop and they start. Whatever you are doing, just make sure you are a part of this. Whichever way you can be a part of it, make sure you are part of the people who are pressing in into their future in the name of Jesus. Come Sunday, 14th of February, ushers please, can we have copies of this? Hallelujah. Only young people like me are invited. 35 and below. Where 35 is plus zero to infinity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our youth empowered services would start third Sunday, third service every Sunday monthly except the first Sunday of the month because Pastor Deboye will be ministering. And next Sunday is Endless Love. Our name is J Tribe, Jesus Tribe. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thought you'd be excited for them. Okay, everybody here, you belong to but we are J Tribe, amen. It promises to be wonderful. Please invite, your, we want it to be a youth service, young people only. If any of the old people join us, they have to do service our way. Praise the name of the Lord. Mommy, you're lying, come, mommy, I did so, yeah, mommy, yes, all those are our mommies, you are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Special divine encounter with the General Vasia online tomorrow. 8th, 9th, and 10th of February. Please be a part of it. 6 p.m. every day on all ROCCG social media handles. Special Divine Encounter. Our communion service on Tuesday will be incorporated into it. So if you come for communion on Tuesday, it will be the Special Divine Encounter, and then we'll have communion afterwards. Praise the name of the Lord. Our theme this month, if you were coming upstairs and you checked the landings, is light up your life. And it's from Matthew 25, verse 7. Matthew 25, verse 7. It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Our lamps will begin to burn brighter in the name of Jesus Christ. Another version of that scripture in Luke 12, verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 in the New Living Translation. It says, be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. Be dressed. We are not talking about, you know, all the fine garments that you are wearing. It's talking about dressing for spiritual service, getting ready for heaven, and keeping our lamps burning in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, precious Holy Spirit, this is your word, the word of life. We ask you this morning that you take ownership of your word. Speak through me, my Father. Bless your people. Bless us. Rebuke us. Chastise us. Do everything, oh God, that you need to do to align us with our future, with our destiny in you, in the name of Jesus. Let every contrary spirit be silenced right now. Let them fade away. 
And Lord, grant understanding to every one of us insight from your word. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things from your word. Let it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 25 verse 1 to 10. Matthew 25, I'll be reading verse 1 through to 10. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. The door of eternity will not be shut against us. In the name of Jesus. Of what use is a lamp with no oil? Of what use? Because a lamp with no oil won't have light. Of what use do you have a, a bulb that is burnt? The bulb won't give, you can switch it on from the wall, you can connect it, but because the bulb is burnt, light is not going to come out. This week, this month, and for the rest of our lives, brethren, I want us to take note that God is calling us in a new way, in a new fashion, and wants you to know that your lights must be burning bright. Your lamps must burn. Your light must burn. That's why we wrote it there on the board. God gave us the word, light up your life. So you need to check the areas of your life. Is there darkness anywhere? We all need light. We need light to see properly. You need light to see where you are going. You need light to make progress. You need light for comfort. You need light to heat up your food. You need light for service. Faith is a light, but only if it works by love. Faith is a light, only if it works by love. Faith purifies the heart. Knowledge is a light, but only if that knowledge will bring people into the fullness that God has for them. Knowledge is a light. Experience that you have is a light, but it needs oil. The oil of God. I'm going somewhere this morning. Because the whole world right now is, a tum is in turmoil. Things that people used, never used to do before in the open, now it is commonplace. I subscribe to a particular Christian channel. And from the beginning of this year, my service provider has moved it into junk mail. Everything Christian from that particular service provider, if you have whatever all this dot com, dot net, they've moved it into junk mail. And I said, but this is not junk mail. I'm subscribing. They want the world to be in darkness. Jesus has warned us. He said this world will be in darkness, but you are the light. But of what use are you as a lamp with no light? And God is warning us and is calling us. Also, light is not static. You know, there, we are told that light travels at, I don't know it's in kilometers. Sometimes um, I belong to the above 35, sometimes I belong to but we are told that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. I don't know it's in kilometers. So, but just imagine 186,000 per second. What is the speed of light? That's what they tell us. So, light is constantly in motion. Light is dynamic. Light should function. Light should provide what it is meant to do. Light should be able to walk anywhere and everywhere. You are the light of the world. So wherever they put you, you must be able to shine. Don't say it's because they put me in Idumota or they put me somewhere. If you are truly the light of God, wherever you get to, people must know that a child of God has entered into this place because you are the light of the world. We must not let our light go out. 
neither must we cease to watch out for our souls. That's the essence of this parable from Jesus. And I'm going to break it down for us in the short period that we have. There were 10 virgins. They had similar similarities, outward similarities. Number one, they were all virgins. When you use the word virgin, you are talking about innocence. You're talking about purity. You are talking about professing a faith. You are talking about protection. You are talking about a protected species. So they were all virgins. The Bible didn't say some were partial virgins. There was nothing like that. They were all virgins. Number two, they were all dressed and prepared for the arrival of the bridegroom. They were dressed and prepared. What were they prepared for? They knew that the bridegroom is going to come. Brethren, we are all virgins in here, outwardly. We have come into church. The only reason why you came into church this morning is either that you're a child of God or you are longing to meet with God. So we all appear the same. We are looking forward for the salvation of our souls and to spend eternity with Jesus. Number three, they were all stationed in the same location. They were at the door waiting to be ushered in. Remember, they were waiting for the bridegroom. There was a place they were going, they were supposed to enter. So they were all in the same place. We are all in the same place on this earth, waiting to be ushered into the presence of our Savior. But number four, which is critical to you and to me today, part of the requirements for entry was that every one of them must carry a personal lamp that must be born in when the bridegroom comes. That was the major requirement. You must have a lamp. And your lamp must be on. It must be shining. Not tiny candle light. Your light must be on. It must be shining. And I noticed that each of the virgins had lamps with oil that started out burning bright. We all have lamps. At what level your lamp is burning, I do not know. But they all had lamps that started out burning bright. They were super excited. They are waiting for the Lord's appearance. You remember the joy. You remember how you were appreciative that God saved your soul. But that's where the similarities ended. Five of those virgins made provision in case they may need extra oil. In, they made provision. They were proactive. They didn't just say, we are waiting for the bridegroom like the other five. If the other five saw it or knew it, I do not know. They may even have mocked them that are ah, overdue Christian. Hey, over Z. You know what over Z is now? Over Z loss. That, ah, ah, now you killed Jesus. You are carrying this thing on your head. They may even have made fun of them. They didn't make extra provision. These five wise ones wanted to be sure that when the bridegroom came, they would be ready. They were vigilant. They were, be, they were prepared. Remember Luke 12, 35. It says, be dressed for service. So they were dressed. They were ready. They were waiting. The other five, they trusted in their own strength and ability. Once I have a lamp, it would always burn. It's not so. They trusted in their own strength. They trusted in the fact that they had prepared. Yes, they were wearing the dress. They were carrying the lamb, but they made no extra provision. It is sad that when we read verse 5, please, can you give back to us Matthew 25, verse 5? The Bible says, because the bridegroom delayed, because the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Please, how many people slumbered and slept? Only the five wise ones. How many of them? That means that as a Christian, don't ever deceive yourself that you may not slumber. You are not meant to slumber, but the possibility is there. Why did they slumber? Why do we get weak? Because the bridegroom delayed. These days we are seeing things and we are discouraged. Many of us are weary. We still come to church, but we've lost our fire. We've lost the spark. We come quite okay. We sing the songs, but everything has become a boring routine. They were slothful. And you see, it says they slumbered and slept. So they didn't just lie down. It was a process. Backsliding is a process. 
People just don't decide one day, I'm not going to be a Christian again. People just don't decide one day, I'm not going to pray again. People just don't decide one day, I'm not going to marry my wife or my husband again. It's a process. We need to guide against that process. It says they all slumbered and slept. I pray that every one of us in the sanctuary, beginning with me, will be awakened in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, awake to righteousness. Because those that sleep, when do they sleep? They sleep in the night. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 13. It says, those who sleep, sleep in the night. At midnight, they all slept. Please don't be indifferent to the danger of the condition of your soul. Don't ever assume at any point in time that all is well. Because you do not know, in fact, you don't know if you are sleeping until you wake up. Is that not so? And then you, you, you are there. Sometimes you are sitting down and you don't know you are sleeping. God forbid that a driver will sleep off while driving. Is it possible to sleep off while driving? Eh, why? Why should a driver sleep off while driving? He's weary, he's tired, he hasn't had enough time to sleep, or he's distracted. That was what happened to them. Are you watching daily for the, for the condition of your soul? Serious vigilance is required from you and from me so that we are not caught on our wares. But you see, for the five wise virgins, it didn't show on the outside. It's not showing on the outside now the condition of all of us. It's not showing whether you're a genuine Christian. It's not showing or whether you are a foolish Christian, hypocritical. You are just here. You are pretending. You are something else in church on Sunday. You lift up hands. Meanwhile, the angels are saying, these are not holy hands. Please put down your hands. During the week, are you living as a child of God? Are you fraudulent? I'm not even talking about the things you know that are very obvious that we always talk about. Hey, is he smoking? Is he drinking? Is he an adulterer? Is he this? Are you living the life as a child of God? Are they referring to you, even in your office, that uh -uh, this one, oh, we know him, he's a Christian? Do they know you to be a child of God? Hypocrisy is one thing. Pretense is one thing. Your outward behavior will show up on the true day of judgment. The wise virgins, they had inward, you know, holiness, steadfastness. They knew that when the bridegroom comes, it may be possible that this light may be dim. Remember, the Bible says they all slept. It's not that the light had gone off completely. Mm -mm. The light, but it was burning very faintly. So they trimmed their lamps. That's where we got to the, um, this month's theme from. They trimmed their lamps. Because suddenly, at midnight, at the point when it is critical, the cry came out. The bridegroom is here, and they all got up. The lights looked like it. So everybody, they clinked the wicks. Everything that was clogging it. Things that had made them to slumber. The weariness. And they got up and they said, no, 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 no. We are children of God. And what happened? Verse 7. The ten virgins. Please, can you give us verse 7? Then all those virgins arose. How many virgins arose? Some of them. All of them arose. And they began to trim their lamps. At the least expected time, at the least expected opportunity, the bridegroom came and they began to remove the ashes, whatever may have been clogging them from shining brightly. And then the five foolish asked the people, verse 8, who had made allowance for their Christianity, they said unto them, give us some of your oil. Some said, borrow us some of your oil. Brethren, today I am pained to tell, tell you some things in life. I know that Elisha told the woman, he said, go and borrow several vessels. You remember? Don't borrow a few. There are some things in life that cannot be borrowed. 
There are some things in life that cannot be given away. Because they said, borrow us, give us. And those ones answered them in verse 9. Uh-uh, go and buy. Go and buy your own. Some things must be bought. Some things must be personally purchased. A few things about that. No man has any commitment towards God to spare. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. According to Proverbs chapter 9 verse 12. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. You can only be a Christian for yourself. It is not transferable. You can't transfer Christianity. You can't transfer holiness. You can't transfer relationship with God. Relationship with God is not by association. It's not by parentage. Each, each person must come to God for himself. No third party relationship. I gave my life based on something I heard God say to me. I've told many of us here before. I'll relate it to us briefly. My salvation testimony. I lived in a Christian home, but I was not a Christian. I did not live like a child of God. I was hiding. I was a hypocrite. I was doing things that today I am so ashamed that I can't even open my mouth to say such things. But I thank God that he forgives sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses. So long story short, my father had died. Young man, he had died under 50. And I was very angry. And I was saying that, ah, but this man served God. I could see a lot of people around me. Parents of my friends who were not Christians and they were alive. Anyway, I had a dream one night. And I, it was like a camera zoomed in heaven and zoomed on my dad. And I saw him prostrate among one of the people worshipping God in heaven. So I was very happy. In my foolishness, in my dream, real foolish girl, I said, okay, God, I forgive you now. My father is in heaven. But that wasn't the only foolish thing I said. I said, that means that me too, when I die, because if my father was in, is in heaven, where should I go? Is he not heaven? So I said, okay, that means me too. I'll just go straight to heaven when I die. I, I've had that voice only once since then. And he said, no. I don't have grandchildren. Everybody that comes to me must come one by. God has one. Have you seen God's grandchildren in the Bible? They don't exist. So you can't transfer relationship with God. You can't associate. You can't say my wife is a Christian, so I'm a Christian. You can't say my husband is praying, so I'm good. You are not good. The second thing about that is that some people seek to go and buy oil when it is too late. You remember the bridegroom was just at the door and the wives told them, go and buy for yourselves when it is too late, when the door of hope is shut, when the door of mercy and of grace is shut. They begin to rush to ask for grace, to ask for mercy on their deathbed, not necessarily on the deathbed, but when things are happening. I'd like to read to what Proverbs 1, 28 and 32. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28 and 32. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Verse 32. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. You will not be a fool in the name of Jesus. A man can only ignore God at his own peril. You know, so the five wives' virgins, they told the other five to go and boil and buy oil. It means you must take personal ownership of your salvation. Oil must be bought, not borrowed. You can't borrow oil. You must buy it. The abundance of the supply of the Spirit of Jesus, according to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. That which is needed to ensure that a man enters heaven must be bought. You can't borrow it. You must pay for it yourself. Your character is like salvation. It's a personal thing and cannot be borrowed or in the Nigerian parlance dashed to somebody else. You can't dash it out. It's not transferable. I cannot borrow you strength. I cannot borrow you salvation for your soul. You have to go to where it is being sold to buy it for yourself. Other things must be bought, not just oil. 
But you see, when we are talking about buying, we are not talking about money. We are talking about coming to Jesus. Because whatever you need on this side of, his, of eternity has been fully paid for. Other things that must be bought. What else? You must pursue those things diligently. Secure it as your own. Proverbs 23 verse 23. We are going to read it together. Proverbs 23 and verse 23. One to read. Okay, so what are the four things that the Bible says we should buy? They are number one. No. What's number one? Truth. Number two. Number three. Number four. And then it tells us, it says, buy those four things. Make sure you never sell them. Make sure nobody takes it away from you. Buy the truth. If the Bible says buy, it means it's available for sale. Somewhere else in Proverbs 17, verse 16, it says, Of what use is there the purchase price for wisdom in the hands of a fool if he has no heart for it? So of what use do you want to buy if you do not have a heart for it? Like the five foolish women. What else should we buy? Isaiah 55 verse 1. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's saying, come and know Jesus for yourself. How do I buy without money? It's been fully paid for. What else do I need to buy? Revelation 3.18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Brethren, we are being called to buy. Where is the market where these things are sold? In this season, we are being called to come apart. Brethren, we need to come apart from the world. Separate yourself from the world. Do not be conformed to the culture of this world. You are of a different tribe. You are part of the Jesus tribe. It's not something you should sell. It is not available for sale. Your salvation, your deliverance, your purity, your one-way ticket to heaven is not available for sale at any price. Isaiah 55 verse 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 to 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Brethren, these five foolish virgins, they actually went to buy, you know. They actually went to buy when it was too late, at midnight, when nobody would be selling. How many people do you see in the market at midnight? How will you see what you are buying? How will you even see the road? They actually went to buy. But before they came back, the door was shut. All hope was lost. This world, the door is going to be shut one day. Make sure you are on the right side. The door was shut. Where am I going this morning? Has your love for God and the things of God become cold? Has life become a boring routine? Are you joyless as a Christian? Yes, you know you love the Lord, but you don't have the passion anymore. The only way around this is to first of all acknowledge that your spiritual position has shifted. That the oil has gone out. That your light is no longer shining. Yes, there's a tiny flicker, but it's, whatever is left is about to go out. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, he said, strengthen those things 
that remain, lest they also be destroyed. Begin to strengthen. Begin to check again. You need to check this morning. Do you have spare oil? If the trumpet were to sound today, if you were put in a place or in a situation where you need to speak for yourself, do you have spare oil? Only God can cause your light to begin to burn again. David said in Psalm 51 verse 12, Psalm 51 and verse 12, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. I encourage you this morning, as I've been doing for myself for a few days now, number one, constantly review the state of your soul, lest there be no issues between you and God. Unforgiven sin, iniquities that you haven't yet dealt with, hypocrisy round the corner, check yourself. Check that there is nothing between you and God. Hosea 14, 1 to 2. Hosea 14, 1 to 2. Oh, Jesus sanctuary. Well, right now, you know you can't borrow holiness. You can't borrow salvation. So I'm going to read it for myself as it is in my Bible. Oh, Adiola, return to the Lord your God. For you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Verse 2. Take words with you. I want to stop there. He says, take words. In other words, don't pretend. Come to God and expose yourself. He knows already. But you know, when you say it, he knows that you are taking ownership and you are saying, God, I'm sorry. Like pastor told us, I think last week, that David and Saul, the difference between them was that when Saul was confronted with his sin, he made excuses. When David was confronted with his sin, he didn't speak in tongues. He said, I have sinned. So take words with you and return to the Lord. And I say to the Lord for myself this morning, take away all iniquity, my father. Receive me graciously, for I will offer the sacrifice of my lips. That's the most critical thing today. Take words with you. So this morning, how do I purchase this oil? Because I need spare oil. I can't help myself. I have other things, but my time is almost up. By the daily discipline of prayer, not allowing your position to shift in the place of prayer, making it your prayer day and night, that Lord, let me be found worthy to enter in. Lord, show me in any way that my light is going. I don't want to deceive myself at all. I am living in a world, I'm living in a situation. I don't want to be hypocritical. Study the word. Align yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror of God's word. Not in the mirror of what other people are doing. Please. Don't look at what other, how other people are living their lives. Look at your life in the mirror of the word of God. If you truly look at it in the mirror of the word of God, the Lord will show you where there are gaps. He will show you where there are a, a blemishes. To us in Jesus' sanctuary, what is needed right now? Arise, awake, light your lamp now. Buy without money. Call to Jesus. Come to him. I pray that the door will not be shut against us. That the doors of mercy will not be shut against us in Jesus' sanctuary. That the door of grace will not be shut against you. The door of opportunity. Right now there is opportunity. Call upon him while he is near. Because the day is coming when the, day, when the door will be shut. I didn't read verse 11 to us of that Matthew 25, but I'll tell you what it says. He said they now came after they have, you know, gone to buy oil. And they said, open to us. And you know what the master said? I don't know you. Go away. You walk us of iniquity. The door will not be shut against us. In the name of Jesus, please rise to your feet. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
Look full on his wonderful face And the things of the earth will go strangely in the light of his glory and grace. Please, no instruments. I want us to sing that song. It's a call to you. It's a personal call to you. It's not a call for salvation right now. I'm going to do that. But this is for you. Turn my eyes upon Jesus. I look full. I look full in this wonderful face. And the things of earth. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light. Brethren, look upon your life this morning. Are you a wise virgin or a foolish virgin? I can't determine that for you. Have you been borrowing other people's oil? It's not going to happen. From today, I need you to focus on God. Talk to God. Take ownership of today's service. Take ownership of this message for yourself. Because today is the day of salvation. Talk to God about the condition of your soul. You may say, God, I don't even know. Lord, I do not have an understanding. But God knows you. Can you call upon God this morning? Cry out to God if you need to. Kneel, prostrate, do whatever. But call upon God this morning. That Lord, this is your daughter. This is your son. This is nobody else. This is my life. This is my future, my father. I am calling upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Call to God. God wants to. Nobody is listening to you. And if you are here this morning... And you've never made that commitment to God. You are not even a virgin at all. You are polluted. But God can clean you. God can cleanse you. If you are here this morning and you do not know the Lord, whether you are sitting upstairs or downstairs or in the basement or in the seminar room, and you want to connect with Jesus wherever you are, please raise your right hand. I want to pray with you. You want to be born again. You want to be able to hold a lamp. Right now, if you do not know Jesus, you don't even have a lamp. So how can you have oil if you don't have a lamp? Is there anybody this morning? Please, if you are raising your head, raise it above your head. God wants to hear you. If you are backslidden and you want to come back to God this morning, there's an opportunity for you. Is there any other person? Please raise your hand. If you are raising it, raise it well. I want to pray with you this morning. I want to ask God to come into your life afresh. I want you to make that fresh commitment before God. Is there anybody? Is there anyone? Call upon God today, my brethren. God is here. He says, go and buy the oil. Today, there's still opportunity to buy. Today, there's still opportunity for grace. Today, there's still opportunity for mercy. Don't let today pass you by. Nobody's guaranteeing you tomorrow. Nobody's guaranteeing you that when you live here, you will have another opportunity. Now is the time. Now is the opportunity. Now is the time to call upon God. Is there anybody at all? Any one of us calling upon Jesus, asking Jesus to intervene. Is there anyone? He loves you and he cares about you. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I turn my eyes upon Jesus. Look for his wonderful.
Father, you are the only one that can keep us from falling. Help each one of us, oh God, to realize how far away we are, how dimly our light has become. Show us how to trim our lamps, oh God. We need fresh oil. Lord, upon everybody here today, we ask, oh God, pour your fresh oil. Oil, oh God, oil. As we turn our eyes upon Jesus, pour upon us fresh oil. The abundance of the supply of the Spirit of Jesus that we begin to burn bright, oh God. Lord, that we will not slumber. Jesus, that we will not sleep the sleep of death in the name of Jesus. Lord Jehovah, that we and every member of our household, oh God, we have more than sufficient to see us through until we see you in heaven. Help us, my Father. We need you now. No excuses for previous behavior. Only a plea for mercy. Revive, renew, restore. Fresh oil, fresh fire in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we begin to burn brightly for you again, O God, let other people come to us and we show them the way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. No, it's okay to say hallelujah. Hallelujah.